us turn to Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. I believe for every one of us, uh, may I acknowledge also the presence of the little ones, our children who are joining us because their classes are not ongoing at this time. You are welcome, Bangan Bami. We love you. Thank you for being here with us. I believe that every son and daughter of the Lord is very much interested in doing what the Father wants, that is God himself, and if we are going to know God, probably this was a lesson I was learning, I'm trying to adapt to, to learn for myself. To know God uh, progressively, better, deeper, there must be a willingness to be disturbed from the usual. One of the very destructive uh, things in the life of a believer is to be used to have an agenda that you don't want to be disturbed from. A well-prepared agenda that accommodates you and what you maybe what you you believe is the right thing to do but God does not so much honor our agenda because he has an agenda that is why Jesus said I have come to do your will I have come to do your will I believe in every meeting, in every, it may be prayer, ultimately, we must not just come with a verse or scripture or the length of time we have prayed, but we must all come and say, the Lord was with me. The Lord was there. You may not remember the items if item number last was first, it's not the issue. But the greatest issue is the Lord was there. I ministered to the Lord and the Lord ministered to me. The Lord ministered to me. So, otherwise, you can read your Bible at home. And your experience here should not be the same as you are at home. There must be a difference. There must be a difference. Now we turn to Luke 21, verse 25 and 26, and Acts 14, verse 21 and 22, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 4. This is more of an introduction to the sermon I started, though. It's a continuation, but an introduction to the continuation if there's anything like that. <laughs> yes, please read. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror. Oppressive. People will faint. Thank you for that. Uh, let, just hold on there. People will do what? Faint. People will faint from what? Terror. from terror. People will lose strength in the things that will be happening. So if the truth is not driven home about the things that are happening today, things that speak terror, things that speak hopelessness, why is it happening? And how can we not 
survive. I don't like maybe for us to think of surviving, but how can we thrive? How can we thrive even when there is terror, even when there is something that is draining our strength? How can we thrive? I want to believe that if the Lord saw this time ahead and told all those who follow him, those who believe in his word, those who believe in him, if the Lord made the announcement about what is going to happen on earth, then when the things begin to happen, the solution must come from him. It becomes a problem when the Lord predicted the difficult times, times of hopelessness, times of incurable diseases, times of economic decline, times of loss, losing our jobs, losing our businesses, and we are aware of the time. If we seek a solution politically, we will never find it. Because these times have been predicted by the Lord. These times are an agenda, a set up. These are the footsteps of the master's coming. If we'll be able to sail through this time, we must not listen to what the government is saying about this time. We must listen to the voice that spoke about this time. It can only be a divine, supernatural work of God that will help us to sail through this time. If Jesus actually, if Jesus saw these times coming, if Jesus predicted and told us about this time, that you shall experience distress, you shall experience hardship, you shall experience failure, if we are going to be crushed and not live through this time, he would have told us. But he told us that you will go through this time. You will go through this time. So as to how we go through this time, we must not check our finances. We must not check how the how the governments are operating, what the politicians are saying. We must go back to him who saw us thriving even during the times of suffering. Thriving in the times of suffering. Now we see the chaos. As we see these things, I think another portion of scripture says, when you see these things, lift up your eyes. Don't look around. The solution may not come from the human resources. Not that the governments and politicians will not do their assignment. They have their part. But as for divine solution for thriving at this time, it can only come from one source, and that is God himself. As resources are shaking, the source of all resources remains unshaken. When we look at the resources that are shaking, definitely we lose hope, we lose strength. But when we look at the source that is never shaken by the, uh, by the landscape of economy, we know that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Yes, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Yes, verse 26. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. The heavenly bodies will be shaken, and there'll be terror. So when we see these things, what do we do? We simply say, we know it has to happen, because the Lord said so. 
And then, Lord, we say now, Lord, we are here. So how do we thrive? Acts 14, verse 21 and 22. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. We he must said. go through. We must go through. We must go through. We must go through. Yes, we must go through. It doesn't say we must die. It says we must go through. We are going through. You are going through. You shall go through. Yes. How does it look like? How do the hard times, the difficult times look like? What makes the times difficult? Second Timothy chapter 3. Verse 1. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. Oh, there will be what? Terrible times. Terrible times. There will be what, Bazarwani? Terrible times. Terrible times. There will come times of difficulty. Why will times be difficult? For people will be lovers of self. Lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, underline that, abusive. Have you seen any form of abuse? God saw it long time ago. God saw it long time ago. There shall be abuse. They shall be disobedient to their parents. People shall be ungrateful unholy. Note this as I conclude my introduction. The terrible times, times refers to a season. A season is a certain period of time in which crucial events occur. Crucial events occur. So the Bible says there will be terrible times. In other words, there will be crucial events that will be taking place. How do we know we are in those events? We see these events by no love. People shall be unloving. If you are experiencing some kind of being unloved, it's the right time. That is what the Bible says. I don't say do it, but the least you can do is pray against it. It's the time. It's the time. And there is a lot, there could be a lot of noise about love, love, but there is no love. That is what the Bible says. There will be a lot of hearts uh, what is this thing that we send there? Those hearts. Baba Leonard, what are those things that you stopped us from sending each other? Yes. So there'll be lots of love. Love you. Send message about love. But the Bible says there'll be more unloving in the end times. Listen to the volume, the words of love spreading but see the results. The results speak more than the words that are going on. If everything was going to the buzz words of love, there will be no such experiences of abuse as we see. They will be more unloving. In other words, there is Fong Kong, Shuan Jalogam. There's a lot of phone call. Love, love, but it's not genuine. It's phone call. We know that if Hong Kong value does not have lasting value, 
If it is gen genuine, it would take you maybe a year. But if Hong Kong, it will last for a week. And then it's gone. The scripture says, this is a crucial time. There will be times, crucial events, where people shall experience unloving. And thank God if you receive or if you get love at this time. Thank God if you find love at this time. Thank God if you find love, if you love and you are loved at this time. Otherwise, this is a time whereby if we are going to the shops, we will all come back empty-handed. Lupe Lile Love is no more there in the shelves. Love is not found. Crucial times. It says again, people shall be ungrateful. In other words, people shall be unthankful. Thank God if somebody says thank you to you. Otherwise, the norm is not to say thank you. The norm of the time. It is becoming normal not to appreciate. So if you experience people who don't appreciate, who don't say thank you to you, don't be angry against them. It's the season. It's the time of unthankfulness. Not that it is right, but it's the time. It's the season of unthankfulness. One remarkable source of help during this time may not, I say it again, with all carefulness, may not, not that it is not, because I know with God all things are possible, and I cannot pretend as though I thoroughly know God. So, but one of our help at this time may not be more prayer to change their hard times. It may not be more prayer to change their hard times. But I believe in these two things. One, have an encourager during this time. As you experience unthankfulness, ungratefulness, you give your best, but people do not give their best back to you. Get an encourager. Somebody who will encourage you in your efforts. As other people are letting you down, don't be angry with those who are not grateful, those who are not thankful. This is what the scripture says in Acts 14. Paul and Barnabas went back to the believers. They encouraged them. As they were facing the suffering, the difficulty of the times, they didn't pray for the time to pass away. But they came along and said, we are here. We want to stand with you. Get somebody to encourage you in your efforts in doing good. You remember the scripture. Do not grow weary in doing good. So that you don't grow weary. Because when you look at the reactions and responses of people, you are most likely to grow, to grow weary. You love, but they don't love you back. You give, but they are not thankful. You support, but they are not supportive. In order for you not to fight anyone, get an encourager. Paul and Barnabas came along not to pray away the situation, but to encourage them. Secondly, uh, the last scripture, Acts 27. Acts 27. 
verse 20. Yes, can you read 20, man? When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Yes, the season was a very tough one. This time was very tough in the life of Paul and the crew that he was going with. So it was a time of injury, it was a time of loss, it was a time of hopelessness. He says, all hope was gone. Hope of being out of this situation was gone. But the key here is, there came an angel of God. Paul says, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid. These two are the key for today. One, have an encourager. Two, get a word from the Lord. Get a word from the Lord. And most of the time, the word from the Lord, I don't want you to walk around trying to listen, to tune up, open your aerial. Yes, Lord, what are you saying? But most of the time, the word from the Lord may come from a person who is not in your same situation. Somebody who is not in what you are experiencing. If it's at home, at work, in business, get away from somebody who is outside your season. Paul said, we will go through. Yes, we shall experience. I like that. Paul was very genuine. He never promised them that they are not going to lose anything. But he said, there is one thing that you are not going to lose. It's your life. It's your life. You will go through. You may lose everything. You may lose your job. You may lose friends. But you are not going to lose your life. This means you have something within you to start all over again. You have something within you. Have you given up all hope in your sea that has been raging? Remember, our title is Holding On, Remaining True to the Faith Through the Hardships of Our Last Days. Could it possibly happen that you've been battered, as it says in Acts 27, verse 18, it reads, Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. The storm has been violent. The season has not been ending. You've been tossed to and fro. Maybe you have come to a point where you say, all hope is gone. Everything you have tried has not worked because the storm has been violent. Have you come to a state where you don't mind losing but only holding on to your soul? May I promise that you will be able to thrive, you will be able to go through. That is what the Bible teaches us, and that is what I have come to say to you. You shall go through. You shall go through. With our hands lifted up towards the heavens, dear Lord, before me and behind me, this is your little flock that you promised your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, that like the children of Israel in the wilderness, they never swell on their feet walking for 40 years. Their clothes never grew old until they reached their destiny. Lord, you are the great shepherd. I thank you that they shall not want because you are the shepherd. I thank you, Lord, that through thick and thin, through rejection, through loss of friends, 
through loss of love, you shall see them through. Oh, hallelujah, they are going through because you are the great shepherd. And I thank you, Lord, that this is the work that you shall, you are proud of leading your flock in a journey through hardships and causing them to thrive. Lord, I thank you for ministering life, wellness and health, and above all, your blessing and peace to be in abundance upon each one of them to the glory and praise of your name. Let us give him praise in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus.